So for the next few days, we're going to be reading Peter's first letter. And Peter is the Peter that we read about in the Gospels. He's the disciple on whom Jesus says, I will build my church. And uh, he gets a lot of things wrong in the Gospels and in the early story of the early church, which is one of the reasons I really like him, because I can relate to that. But he also obviously was really used powerfully by God. Peter um, underwent persecution himself. He would have seen his brothers and sisters in the faith be murdered in one way or another. And he himself eventually was crucified upside down. That's what tradition tells us. Around 65 AD, we think he was killed. So he's writing to a church that is suffering. And he himself has been through that suffering. And so reading it in that light, I think, gives a whole new rawness to it. I've often heard um, from Eddie Lyle at Open Doors that he says the church was written, uh, the letters in the New Testament were written by persecuted Christians to persecuted Christians in the context of persecution. And for us today, certainly in the UK, we're not persecuted anything like the way that um, people are in other parts of the world and have been throughout history. But understanding Peter's suffering and the suffering of the church just helps us read and understand his letter in a new way. And um, there's just one verse I want to pick up on, and it's right towards the end. In chapter 2, verse 2, he says, Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. And just before that, he says, rid yourselves of certain things, malice and envy and hypocrisy and, and other stuff like that, slander of every kind. And instead, don't, don't worry about that stuff, but crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up. What is this pure spiritual milk that we are to crave? I, my, I would understand it in a number of ways, but one I think that's really obvious is to crave the truths of God, to crave who he is, to allow those to feed our souls. Maybe Jesus puts it in another way when he says, um, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. This, this sort of stuff is life to us. This is the stuff that, that makes our souls grow. And in this um, uh, passage from Peter, I, I don't know if you find this, but I read it and it's so dense that I didn't take anything in. So I went and read it again. And this time I read it aloud to myself. And as I was reading aloud, I thought, gosh, there's some crazy stuff in here where he talks about how we are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. And um, we're receiving the salvation of our souls. And even the angels long to, to, to know what we now know that we live in. So because of that, we should be sober in our minds and we should think carefully about what we're doing and choose to be choose to be obedient children. I thought, flipping heck, just in this one chapter, there is so much um, food for our souls, so much to draw on. And this stuff is food for our souls. Let's crave it and let's drink it in every day that we can. Maybe read this back through and just take just some of those truths and just enjoy them for a while. And what happens is it's like beefing up your soul. It grows.